Hi, everybody. This is Erica Mello and Susan Clinton, and welcome to episode number 159. We are moving up to 200. <laughs> and this is, uh, I know, it's its interesting because we release episodes every week. And I realize, I look back on all the episodes and I'm back to like number one, right? It seems like eons ago. Time has gone by so quickly, though. Uh, this episode, I wanted to talk about a patient I saw last year, actually, and and we talk a lot about center of mass in the in, in the in the podcast, but this guy actually had significant low back pain, and his pelvis was his driver, not in the way that you or you that the listeners would think, uh, but the pelvis has a lot to do with how we adjust our center center of mass. And I gave him specific exercise pro- progression as well as some taping techniques that really helped him. And he's like, I'm shocked at the, the quick progress I made. And I said to myself, yes, so am I. So we can talk about that as well, because it's very, it's not common, you know, I mean, it, it can be common to see very, very quick results. And that's what this guy got. So we, we're, we'll talk a little bit about that. And anything else to add, Susan, before we dive into the episode? No, but looking no. forward to hearing about it. Okie dokie. We'll see you on the episode. Hi, everybody. This is Erica Mello and Susan Clinton, and this is episode 159. How are you, Susan? I'm good. How are you? I am good. Good. Still sunny today. We had thunder the other night. It was crazy. Uh, you know, I, I know we all talk a lot about the weather, but we've had just some strange weather here in New York uh, the past few weeks that it's actually a beautiful, a beautiful spring day today. So yeah, at, the, will, time, uh, at the time of this recording, it's uh, last week in April. Or close to the last week in April, and we are having snow. <gasps> oh, we've got so at least two, <laughs> at least two inches, if not more, coming down. It's oh, like wow! Spring in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Spring in spring in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. I so. was going to say. I know. I tend. I look. I'm a big sort of uh, weather channel. I look at the weather radar. A lot. I don't know what it is. That's just I like to do that, and I often look at Michigan and I see where you where you are. And I'm like, oh, there's there's a lot of weather activity in that part of the of the country going into north and you know southern Canada, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, still, a lot of snow. I actually, saw some snow in Denver recently. So anyway, here okay. we go. Um, so I'm going to talk about a patient of mine who I was just telling Susan I saw a year ago, uh, which is you know crazy since it seemed like it was yesterday. So this this was uh he had significant low back pain. So I'll give you sort of the 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 basics, and then I wanted to talk about his center of mass. And we talk as I said in the intro, we talk a lot about that. But there are a couple of ways that that people can adjust their center of mass, and and this guy uh, actually did it through his pelvis. So uh, he was thirty three years old, young young guy here in New York. Uh, he had multiple episodes of low back pain, and he would sort of mostly on his right side. Uh, but he would sort of, you know, patients sort of run their hand down on the top of their sacrum and mostly on his right side. He had been going on for 10 years. So you're thinking 33, 23 years old, he's had this. And that's kind of young, I think. Um, you know, I had a lot of low back issues at that age too, but he actually ended up going into the emergency room at one point and passed out from the pain. So that sort of tells me a lot about somebody just in and how their sort of reactions to pain to pain. Um, he was, you know, quote unquote, on and off sore. He would at, at the time when he early ta- early on, he was taking what they still they still gave out like Vicodin. They don't do that much anymore, but he was on a lot of codeine. That's what he what he told me. Um, and he's had uh, his past medical history. Um, when I saw him, he's like a year ago, I threw my back out again. And everybody says they throw their back out, right? Mm-hmm. So and that was his main symptom, right-sided versus left. He had a left, he didn't have surgery on his left shoulder. He was left hand, left-handed like myself. He had just a shoulder sort of issue, he said, probably from, he was a big weightlifter. So in the gym, he also had uh, a torn biceps tendon on his right side, at the elbow, which he, where he received a PRP in injection. He also had a foot fracture, which I believe was on his left side. So left foot fracture, ankle fracture, probably you couldn't remember. It was from when he was younger, uh, a left shoulder injury, nothing substantial, probably just managed it on his own. And then the biceps tendon, which was in, in, in intervene with a PRP injection. 
So his movement history was an avid volleyball player in high school and he played softball. So his main issue, as I said, was his lumbar spine worse with sitting. He was on, he was an investment bank. So he sat a lot on a trading floor. And when he was lying on his side, either side, Mm -hmm. walking made him feel better. And he told me that his, when everybody, someone says that, oh, I have low back pain, I always ask, does it run in your family? Because I had read earlier, I don't know if you have over the years, that low back pain has a genetic component to it. So uh, his family, his family, most of his family had low back pain on and off. I mean, 80% of America does. So I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, those were his sort of basic sort of symptoms. What made it worse besides the sitting he was in the gym a lot. He did those hanging leg raises where you're hanging like on a bar and you're doing the knee to chest, double knee to chest. That made it worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, med ball slams where the medicine ball, where they're slam. That just kills me where they're taking the medicine ball and they're throwing it to the floor and they're going into flexion extension back and forth, back and forth. And sled pushes. So he was doing like a traditional sort of almost like a, I don't want to say a CrossFit, but a very heavy workout. So mm-hmm. sled push. So you think about med ball slam, sled pushes, hanging leg raises. They're actually kind of very different, um, but they require the the use of a lot of trunk musculature, okay, it's in order to sort of control the movement, right? Um, that was the clinical reasoning that I that I came up with based on those three aggravating, besides the sitting which was more of a daily, of a daily thing. Um, do you have any questions, Susan, so far? Um, when you're talking about trunk musculature, you're talking about when he was activating his trunk heavy, or are you talking about him over recruiting uh, paraspinals and abs all the time? Yes. Yes. It was the over recruitment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he did a lot of sort of those types of workouts three to four times a week. Okay. okay? Mm-hmm. And other than that, he had no other significant medical history. He was 33, he was fairly healthy otherwise. Um, And so what I did, I actually sent out, uh, it was back when I was sending out the the CSI and the DASS scales. And Mm -hmm. I sent out the, um, I'm looking at it right here, the the DASS. Very, I mean, he scored very, very, occasionally he had, um, you know, he scored often in the often category. On my muscles feel stiff and stiff and achy um, and muscle tension. But what I thought, which clued me in, he said, often I have problems with diarrhea and or constipation Mm -hmm. in that, in that often category. Other than that, it was either rarely, never, just not, not, you know, but not, not, not sometimes is really never or rarely. If anybody's familiar with that, with the DASS, it goes never, rarely, sometimes, often, always, but the diarrhea and constipation sort of like my radar went up there and on the um the the csi he scored very low like like a three i mean very low okay so what i think for him so i so just keep, you know keep that in mind <laughs> um so what i what i ended up doing so since he had a problem with his so i'm thinking what's going to go on my magnet board so you know, do I think his left shoulder and his right elbow is going to be responsible for his back pain with sitting? Perhaps, perhaps. Mm-hmm. I've seen a lot of issues with elbows, especially when they're at the computer, re- being, you know, being a secondary driver to low back pain. But in terms of a primary driver, It was lower on the radar as a primary, but on the magnet board is a secondary issue because of the tendon tear on the biceps. Um, And then what was also on my magnet board was the foot fracture. We just did an episode on on the foot Mm -hmm. uh, weeks ago. So that was on my radar um, because I've seen it. And then obviously the low back and the the hip and the, he didn't have any issues with his hip, but it was like the low back because that was his meaningful area, but then his hip and pelvis were on it. And I did it because of the diarrhea and constipation, but also the area of where he was pointing. So that was on my magnet board. And so uh, I, I, I don't, 
literally write that down. I mean, I did at the beginning, but now I have a mental magnet board. <laughs> I, I, rem- I remember this. So for the listeners, if you have to write all that down, write it down. But I have a, a mental, sort of a mental magnet board. So I took a look at the squat because as I said, it replicates sitting. He does squats in the gym. He did the hanging leg raise. You know, I didn't, I didn't need to see him do a med ball slam or any of the other issues because, you know, uh, it wasn't relevant to the initial, the initial evaluation. Mm -hmm. So I ended up uh, having him do a squat. So when I took a look at him in the center of mass, and so before I actually, I'm going to backtrack a second, I just take, take pictures, you know, we center of mass, stand normal, stand narrow, stand wide. That's Mm -hmm. sort of what I do. After I get the magnet board in my brain, I look at the center of mass. He was very much to the right side. Not surprising, right? Not mm-hmm. surprising, right? Left foot fracture, ankle fracture, not surprising. Left side, right side of the back pain, he was de- he's definitely loading his right side. So what I thought was interesting with him is so um, when I ended up having him squat, he, of course, you know, he went to the right. But what mm-hmm. was interesting, what was interesting, and I noted it down here, when he squatted, he was trying to get his, pe- so with because he was going so far right, he, his pelvis, his whole lower quarter was going to the left. So like, it's hard to explain the uh, like audio, but when he squatted, I closed my eyes. I put my hands on his pelvis, his thorax, his head, his, and then I watch him visually. I do have him do it twice. His whole center of mass was to the right, but he was really trying to get himself to the left. Does that make sense? Kind and of, lot, yeah. yeah. So a lot of, so, but a lot of people, a lot of patients who try to, when they try to offload their center of mass medial lateral, they try to do it with their thorax because it's way easier to do, okay, versus the pelvis where it's hard to move over the, the hips. So when he, when he squatted, let's just, we'll leave it at that. And if anybody has any questions, they can email me. His whole center of mass went further to the right. Okay. And he had a lot of, um, he, what's the he did this sort of rotation in the pelvis where he went to the, went, went to the left. So mm-hmm. his right hip went further forward. Okay. And that's yep. what we saw. All right. Um, and actually just hang on one second. Oh, here we go. So because I'm always trying to prove myself wrong um, <laughs> in these things, because the foot was, he had no, he had a huge foot injury, right? So because we've seen so many issues with the foot, I really wanted to go and, you know, go in and intervene at the foot first and either change the position. So when he went narrow and standing, he was further, further, further to the right. Mm-hmm. So that indicates that there's a lower extremity component. It could be knee, it could be, it could be hip, right? Mm-hmm. So I, so what I ended up doing is I, 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 I went into the foot because he was not married to the fact that his back was the source of his problem, right? You know, there mm-hmm. are some patients who are like, I know it's this region of the body and I know that's the problem. And so when I have patients who are like that, I intervene there first to prove them right or wrong because it's, they have a cognitive impairment. I actually just saw a guy recently and he's like, my hip is the driver. And I'm like, and I, it was not the driver. And so I did that. I intervened there first to prove to him that it wasn't the driver. So with this guy, uh, he didn't, he wasn't married to any in terms of like region of the body that, that he was, that was the driver. So I went in and I, I just, did some decompression in his right foot, um, in his left foot, excuse me. And I, we talked about this before. I just took the subtalar joint, distracted it, had him put the, put the foot down and then lift the right one up. So his body could adjust to gravity. I said, down we go. He was worse, (laughs) way worse. And I was like, what? So I repeated it. So I repeated it. And then I, this time I did, I distracted the subtalar joint. I went in and I did some sort of, I don't even want to, I don't want to go to the specifics here. I did some elongation, like at the midfoot. I gave him, I said, imagine your big toe growing long. Imagine your pinky toe growing long. So he could feel all the four corners of his foot on the floor and had to pick the right leg up, put it down, squat, still worse. I'm like, okay, it's not the foot. I was stunned. Mm-hmm. I was actually stunned. So I moved on. And so he, so what was made worse was that his, his translation of his, his thorax, his his thoracic, his thorax was not worse. He actually was fairly okay with that. Like it wasn't translating more than it normally did before I had done the, the sort of the thing with the foot. So, but his pelvis was way worse. So what I ended up doing was, and I'm just looking through my nose because this was, 
is kind of interesting because I don't normally see this in guys. So how I was taught, I've, I've done a lot. Um, I used actually Diane Lee's uh, compressor belt um, as part of my evaluation. So uh, I just put that aside for now. And all I did was just, I took out the twist in his pelvis. I just centered him. I prevented him from going to the right. So I put my hands on his hips on the top of the iliac crest, excuse me, I literally took out the rotation in the pelvis. And what I mean is I just prevented him from going into that left rotation where that right mm-hmm. ASIS was going forward. That's all I did. But I squatted. Like he wasn't feeling any symptoms either way. So a lot of times when we have patients where we can't replicate the symptoms, I often say, just let me know how the experience is. You may not have pain, but let me know if the experience you know, if you're experiencing something you don't want to experience or how that experience is. And so that's what I did with him. And when he initially squatted without any intervention, he said, oh, I'm, I'm kind of feel a little off. That's all he said. He wasn't symptomatic. So when I went in and took that rotation out in the pelvis and he squatted, he's like, oh, that feels pretty good. And I was like, huh. you know, and I manually took a look at his feet. Um, I just had him do a, like a heel raise. Um, and I didn't do, I had him do a teeny squat. I had him in front of the mirror because I wanted to make sure when he squatted, he wasn't like we talked about a couple of mm-hmm. weeks ago on your episode. I wasn't, I wanted to make sure the toes weren't coming up. The feet weren't scrunching and they weren't, it was nice and soft. Mm-hmm. So, so his foot was pretty okay. And we already knew the foot wasn't the driver based on my last, my last bit. So I, what I ended up doing, Susan, and I want to like your thoughts on this. So I, because I do a lot of, you know, I've seen, I see a lot of pelvic girdle pain, but I often find that the pelvis is not the driver, Mm -hmm. but this guy, and I'll explain in a second, I believe his pelvis was his driver. Um, And he didn't have any other, as I said, he was young. All I did was readjust, just, I prevented him to, I I basically said to him, I said, I'm doing what your muscles should be doing. And, and for the therapist out there, I was balancing the neuromuscular forces across the pelvis, right? He was mm-hmm. overactive back muscles, overactive obliques. All I did was just give his option, his body a better option for movement. And he squatted fine. However, the first thing I did, all I did was center him. That's all I did, right? And so what I ended up doing, I said, and I had him squat with that. I'll go through this very quickly because I'd love your thoughts. Um, I just took out the, I just centered him, had him squat. I feel pretty good. I said, okay, remember how you felt with that? I took Diane's belt. And what her belt has is that she has three pieces. She's got the regular belt, which, which uh, you adjust anteriorly across the pelvis. And then she's got these straps. Okay. Where you Mm -hmm. can apply different compression patterns. So I applied all the four compression patterns, bilateral anterior compression with the Velcro. I can do it with my hands as well. I actually did do that with my hands but I'm just going to skip, skip, skip through that. Cause I wanted to talk about this. So and then I did bilateral posterior compression with the belt and I did the oblique patterns, right anterior, left posterior, left anterior, right, right posterior. So the best compression. So I had him squat with all four of those patterns. I looked at his thorax. I looked at his feet. I looked at his, 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 you know, his, his shoulder. I wanted to make sure nothing was worse with any of those patterns. And so for those of you who don't have a, who, who, um, you know, don't have the, but you can use your hands. You can just do it, do the same movement with your hands, but I needed to free my hands up because I wanted to feel his thorax. I wanted to feel the foot and I wanted to feel the shoulder and the, and actually the hip. So that's why I used the belt. And the best pattern for him was bilateral anterior compression. Hmm. So the center of mass was like great. But then when I did the bilateral, he's like, oh, this is even better. And so I said to him, I said, is there another movement in the gym that you cannot do because of your pain? He's like, yes, a split squat. I said, okay, with the with his symptomatic side, which was the right side back. So I had to put the left foot forward, right side back. I had him do a split squat with the belt on at that point because I repeated it with the belt off after. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, that feels pretty good. So I did that. And, and that was with the bilateral anterior compression. And, and for the listeners, just later on, I actually had him do the split squat without the belt on and it was not great. So, but I wanted to do, I assessed the regular squat for the evaluation. So I'd love your thoughts on that because I, that is not something I see commonly with guys. Um, and, and the reason I did that, I think, it, I don't think it was a pelvis. Like, I think it was, a, it was more of a, a, a overactive system in the pelvis. 
Yeah, and, and the the key there for me is the diarrhea and constipation. Yes, tell me your first thoughts. Of all, first of all, he's on these meds, which does not help. So he's going to have that issue. But the, the other piece of it is, is that you've got that viscerosomatic component that's going on and it's chronic. So there's probably no rhyme or reason. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, that so, and that causes muscles inside and outside of the pelvis to operate differently. Because if you're carrying a load in your sigmoid rectal area, it's going to, you're going to have um, inflammation on the nerves that are going into the, the, that right. For him, it was his right sacral area. It doesn't really matter if it was right or left. You know, I think it's important. Uh, the heavy workout he's working, he's already inflamed and he's throwing gasoline on the fire. And, mm. <clears throat> you know, and I think that the foot thing and the other stuff are significant um, because he's getting, you know, different input from his proprioceptive system. P you know, people don't think a lot about uh, that GI system can alter proprioception, but it can. Because if your GI system is full, it's going to throw your center of mass off. If your GI system is running quickly, it's going to throw your center of mass off. And I think all those things combined are probably a piece of it. It's great that he was able to, that, that the mechanical piece was such that it was changeable enough to give him some good things to go off of. You know, yeah. oftentimes it's it's not quite as changeable, but this is why I've always said that we can't just look inside the pelvis. We have to look at the whole thing mm. because there's things that we can do that can help, you know, their experience, as you like to put it. Um, did it change his GI system? Probably not. He's going to have to work on that. But, you know, he, the mechanical piece was enough that it altered his pain response and it, well, it altered his movement response. I don't know about his pain. He's had this for a long time, yeah. but it definitely altered his movement response and he was able to do things differently, which is like really important that yeah. that showed up pretty quick because that means that that mechanical uh, piece is important for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. The visceral somatic reflex. I really like that because I would have asked that question about constipation diarrhea if I didn't send that questionnaire to him. But it was in the often, it was often, <laughs> it yeah. was in that often mm -hmm. column. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh. And that's why I, you're, that's very, that's, you're absolutely correct. I think that's very interesting because for him, he didn't put the two together yeah. at all. Not right. Yeah. Maybe most people, people don't. Don't. Right. And, you know, clearly, I mean, I, I, I in the initial evaluation, I actually had, I was writing at that point. And I underlined coding <laughs> and I underlined, you know, a, a lot of things. And he had been on things for so long, but he also sat quite a bit. He was very young. I mean, he's 33 years old. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so what I ended up doing. And so, uh, because he also, because of the foot thing, I, I don't want to, I didn't want to want to rule it out because I find that it's a very common driver and it could be because I had got such a bang for my buck um, with the, 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 the belt um, and the pelvis sort of recentering, I knew that the, the foot was not a primary driver, um, mm -hmm. but it could have been a secondary issue. There are many times when you intervene in an area at the beginning and it makes a lot of things worse that it could still be a secondary driver. Okay. It just makes things worse right now. And so that was actually on my radar to assess again. I wouldn't just throw that out the window for the listeners because many, especially when a patient has had a problem for so long, they just can't really adapt. So, and he certainly couldn't, uh, he needed his foot to, uh, you know, he needed some intervention at his foot. And I did do that literally mm -hmm. fairly quickly. Um, and I'll tell, give my reasons why. So, after that, I did I did take a look at the hip because I wanted just to make sure that I wasn't missing a hip a hip issue, although they're so they're so intimately related. But what I ended up doing is, um, I, I, I all I did was pick up his. I took the belt off and uh, I had him do a split squat without the belt on. As I mentioned earlier, it wasn't as good. I got him back into a regular squat position. I picked up his sits bone. I literally picked it up mm -hmm. and pulled it up to get some space in the front of the, the hip. 
and then I let it go. And I, and I wanted just to make sure I was giving him space in the front of the hip. And I basically said to him, I'm just do, I'm just giving you some space in the front of your hip right now. I'm just doing some, what some muscles should be doing. Just repeat, repeat the task. And he squat. He's like, oh, that doesn't feel so good. And so, and his foot was gripping. And so I don't, didn't really want to go, I don't want to go into the whole evaluation here at this point, but let's suffice it to say that the the main driver, I believe, was his pelvis, but it was bilateral anterior compression. So how I learned this was, and I think they've changed, I think Diane has changed how she views this, but when you put a bilateral anterior compression on with a pelvic belt, that's mimicking some activity of the muscles of the anterior, anterior part of your trunk and or decompressing the posterior part. Which is probably more line. likely what was going on with him because if he's got yeah. constipation and diarrhea, he's got probably some issues in his back passage region, which is why that felt good to him. Yes. You know, to yeah. help open that up and uh, uh, probably de 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 emphasize the need to butt crunch or butt tuck, you mm -hmm. know, um, you know, because guys like that usually do. I mean, they they tuck up quite a bit in there. And um, because coccygeus and, and pubic rectalis are probably very, very overactive. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that. So think about, so the hanging knee raises, right. Mm -hmm. That bothered him. So he probably was overactivating um, those muscles, the sled pushes big time, probably a significant amount of weight on there. Mm -hmm. And the med ball slams, not as much, but that's a lot of sort of back and forth with the, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, with the lumbar spine and the trunk. So, so that's interesting. So a lot of those muscles were overactive. So as a therapist who doesn't do internal, which is me, right. You, how do you, I'm just doing this for the listeners. How do you, how do you go about telling your patient that they need to let these muscles go? Same way you do. Just re get behind them and take them out of that position, Efficient. you know? Yeah. yeah. 100%. Just like, you know, do you feel yourself tucked under here? Let's untuck. You know, I like to use different, different things, but it's like, sometimes I'll put my hands on their head mm -hmm. and I'll say, we're going to let your head be suspended. So everything's, you know, you everything's going to come off of your head, let it all go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and let them kind of, you know, soften your knees, relax, let your chest go, everything go <clears throat> so they can get the feeling of, of that. They're not used mm -hmm. to doing it, but just yep. really working with them in a, in a, you know, a way so that um, with his foot, one of the reasons I brought it up is because he probably did not sway forward very well. <clears throat> so he probably generated his forces by overactivating his coccygeus, his hamstrings and his uh, pubic rectalis too. Yeah, do some of the yeah. things that he does. Um, I don't know. I wasn't there, so I didn't see it, yeah, but yeah, you yeah. definitely, you know, can, you know, even in sitting, you know, can you let this go? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, sitting yeah. on the ball can be helpful. Sometimes it can make it worse. You have to kind of, yeah. get, can he move his pelvis independently of his lumbar spine and yeah. his hips? Yes. Yeah. And, and working through yeah, that so way as well. Yeah. And I like the imagery as well. So I actually, just for the heck of it, I had a half foam roller in, in my office. So I ended up going and having him do ba some basic squats and I had him, uh, just, I said, just elevate your heels. I asked him if he elevated his heels when he was in the gym, if he was doing a rack squat, he said, no, I said, just elevate your heels. And he was a lot better on, on the half foam roller. I, I sometimes I use that as to rule in or out a foot, but with him, it really, it was more of just, he actually centered himself. And I told, I said, just do that while, while you're in the gym. So mm -hmm. I told him to discontinue the right now for the short, I said, I always pay, I, I don't tell patients that they can't do anything. I always say, put on hiatus for a week, <laughs> the med ball slams, the sled pushes and the hanging leg raises. You can do other things in the gym. You can do squats, you can do front squats, things like that. So but I, what I, what I did is I actually sent him home. I taped him. So I took hypofix and leuco tape, uh, and I actually taped him according to the belt. So I taped him into bilateral anterior compression. I put the hypofix around just literally right by the, um, you know, on the lateral part of the iliac crest, I pulled it forward. I did the same thing on the other side. And then I put leuco tape, uh, on that. And, uh, I was, cro I crossed midline with the tape, both pieces of tape. So, and I sent him home 
with that. Okay. So I'm just going to back because I didn't think he needed a belt long term. It was just really more for like a visit or two. And he was okay with the tape. So mm-hmm. I also, so in my assessment, and I, I'm going to sort of skip through this, but I, I determined that there are certain muscles of his pelvis that were overactive. Adductor was a big one mm-hmm. uh, for him. And, uh, so I gave him an, the, an adductor stretch with the belt, like lying supine, had the belt around his leg and sort of dropping it slowly out to the side. Mm-hmm. So I did give him that. It's not a common one I give, but I gave him that, um, along with the, um, with, with the, with the, with the tape. Okay. Mm-hmm. I sent him home. He came back probably a few days later and the, the following week. And he's like, oh, I feel a lot better. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I don't say that, you know, it's like, you're like, oh, <laughs> was it that quick? It's, kind of, it's not common, but you know, he's a longstanding pain, right? He's like, yeah, I felt pretty good. And I was like, okay. I, he goes, the tape really helped. And I'm laughing going, it figures, it figures that the pelvis, you know, and then I went back and looked at his questionnaires again. And I, you know, as I said, I'm like, this, the constipation, the diarrhea, it, it definitely, there's definitely a link here, right? Um, cause it's not common that I see this in guys. I just don't, you know? And so the second visit, I started to get, do some movement. So I did some hands-on work in the pelvis. I did some release of the adductors, did some release of the lumbar, of some of those back muscles. Um, and he was pretty convinced that his back was not, um, the problem because he'd had it treated in the past. So mm-hmm. he was like, didn't have that cognitive barrier. So what I did do with him, because he wanted to do those hanging leg raises where you're hanging, he was probably overactivating everything going and he probably wasn't even activating his 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 lower abdominals so i gave him one i give a, a lot of people um y- y- who have these issues where they're they're in a tabletop position against the wall so we've t- i've talked about this one before where we, i've had two pillows under his bum and he's in the tabletop position i had like a green theraband wrapped above his knees and i just had him do bent knee raises and bent knee fallouts with his hips under two pillows so as to sort of take out that overactive quad or what overactive oblique or overactive, whatever it adductor, whatever was overactive in that position. And so I gave him that um, to do as, a, as, a, as like the, the, the third thing. So the taping, I continued to tape him. I continued to give him the adductor stretch. I gave him the bent knee fall out and the bent knee raise as well to do. Do you have any thoughts on that? I gave him one other thing and then I'll tell you. No, I thought, it, you know, if it's working for him, There's no reason to do, you know, I don't think it's one of those things like you're getting him to move his hips without move over working his trunk. Taking gravity, letting gravity do the work. Yeah. 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 So, and you're just getting him to separate the movement patterns so that he's not doing mass movement patterns. He's, you know, having to go through and pick them out and do them separately. And I think that's probably good for him because it sounds like to me in the beginning with the way his pelvic his pelvis was twisting as he moved, that he had kind of a mass movement pattern that wasn't segregating out. Yeah. Well. And all of the things he were do he was doing in the gym was replicating that with mass movement patterns. Yep. Yep. Pushing the sled, you know, doing medicine ball uh, slams, you know, those types of things are all mass movement patterns. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying those are bad to do. It's just that for him, it was just feeding into what was going on with him. Yeah, and what you yeah. were doing was taking things to, in a different way, which was a little bit more of a neuromuscular approach to get him to move things separately. Yes. yes. Can you move your legs without tightening up your belly? Can you move your torso without, uh, you know, having your adductors fire? Can you, you know, so you were having him do those different things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, for me, I also gave him, you know, the Shirley Sarman exercise where you go down on all fours and you were going to put that, I had him put his right hip in external rotation and I had him just go back and forth just as a, a quick movement. I did that for like two visits um, just to get, 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 get him. And uh, because he was having a hard time finding center and uh, in the first session. And so I had him on his hands and knees. I had him put, I put a TheraBand down the middle of the table, of the floor. I said, put one hand on one side of the van, the other hand on the other side, your knees equal and just 
you know, your knees, same things, hips, hip, hips width apart, but center yourself. And then I just said, move your right, your right foot in towards your left. So put, mm-hmm. put his hip into external rotation. I said, keep your eye on the band. And he was able to do that and center himself really nicely. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried the wall squatting with him at the beginning. He just wasn't centering. I'm like, okay, that's why I, I and I tested that in the session before the, so that was the second session after I evaluated him, I wanted to progress to a wall squat. I wasn't getting anywhere, which is shocking because I usually get there with people, but I wasn't getting there with him. Yeah, that's when I do the doorknob squat because that's what I ended the, up doing. Yeah, because the door is <laughs> the door helps them maintain midline. That's and, what I ended up doing, and it also <laughs> takes away some of the other stuff that's going on. So, yep, that's what perfect. I did. Yeah, so I did the all fours, the on the hands and the the bent knee raise, bent knee fallout. Continued to tape him, and I did the door the door the doorway squats. That's what I did um, because I said at this point it's an overactive system. But we need him to get centered because you're right. Those are mess movement patterns with heavy weight. And when we load, we don't have as many options for movement. So we're going to default to our normal pattern, which is what he did. Center of mass to the right and his whole sort of sort of transverse plane rotation to the left, which is basically what he, he was doing. So fast forward, third visit, doing amazing. I'm like, this is, you know, it was just, it was strange because you're a lot of, I don't say that to belittle what we do, but it, it, he had such an ingrained pattern, but his nervous system was so plastic. And I think that the interventions were very specific. Uh, so the third visit, he came, he came in, he's like, I feel pretty good. Um, and so I progressed him to doing split squats. I progressed him quicker than I normally would have. I had him doing the split squats. I had him doing walking lunges at that point. I had him doing because he was able to center himself. And I do think the combination, and this is why I also wanted to bring him up. I had him do almost the same thing, but in different positions, the bent knee raise, the bent knee fall out, hands and knees, doorway squats. Those are similar mm-hmm. patterns, but they're different positions. So I was trying to reinforce a pattern three different ways. And I think that was one of the, of the keys to his quick, quick success. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I ended up giving him some cueing. Uh, I like your, your cueing for the release of the posterior part of the pelvis. I also gave him some cueing just for some just lower abdominal cueing. Um, you know, it, it was really more of you know, imagine I, you know, I basically told him, uh, you know, I put my hands on his lower abdominals. I said, imagine my fingers are bookends. Just think about bringing those bookends together very slightly. I did that for like 10 reps and he was good to go. So his, he had really responded well to, um, to this intervention. And I saw him for literally four sessions and I discharged him. And he said to me, I was so surprised at such a quick, response and I didn't want to say yeah I was too but so I didn't obviously but I think with him because I do I did tape him all sessions he was not he didn't ha- have any redness he wasn't uh, from the tape he was he was actually very good I think that definitely helped although the third or fourth session he didn't need that a lot of compression to be quite honest mm-hmm. um but I but I think the key at the beginning it was getting him center on the wall, on the hands and knees, in the doorway. Uh, and then I actually just sent him home the last session. I said, just, you know, release your, you know, do a ball release on your foot, you know, and because I was confident that it really wasn't the driver, but I knew that at that point that his, and I rechecked his foot. I rechecked the position I did at the beginning. I had him squat. I corrected his foot. It did not make it worse. So that's mm-hmm. when I gave him the ball release, sent him on his merry way and discharged him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I don't usually it's a bit it's a bit more of a longer sort of thing with these chronic patients but I also you know for the Pilates listeners I had him on the on the chair the one to chair and I had him do some eccentric hip flexion I had him go on the the the, the Cadillac or the trap table I had him do some sort of roll downs things like that uh, I had him do some standing um, sort of push down on the chair within a split squat position uh, that's what I did really did on 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 in, in with the Pilates equipment. But he was sort of good to go. But I wanted to talk about him because he 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 was a pelvis, look like a pelvis driver. Um and it was and, and I do believe a lot had to do with that fistosomatic reflex. I really do. I agree with mm-hmm. you hundred percent. That's why I wanted to bring him up because I I it's not something I see often. Yeah, one hundred percent. Well we may see it more often, just not realize it. Exactly. You know, so because we're not asking, always asking the questions that we should be asking. 
which can right. which can help quite a bit. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Yeah, All right, so everybody. Fun. We'll see you next time. Yeah, Thanks for, for listening. Episode. Bye.